Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv You're listening to Revolution Radio. What if all we thought we knew of truth was sequestered upon lies, carefully manufactured science, craftily complicated algorithms meant undecipherable? Comfortable in deceit and the convenience of routine, Most reject truth when confronted by it. People do not like being told that they have been bamboozled, especially by those systems they have invested trust within. And few will latch on to anything that challenges or contradicts their foundational belief, choosing to cling to false illusions so long as either it is majority opinion or someone they admire perpetuates the lies. The grand deception as matrix is all-encompassing, consuming and broad-reaching, yet so covert in imposition, it is largely unnoticed by those born into its nurturance. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen. And I thank all of you for taking the time to join us this evening. I've got a very exciting show lined up for you. And as always, I have as co-host Kathy Dunson. Kathy, are you there, sister? I'm here. I really like that last line that hardly noticed by those who are nurtured in that. I mean, yeah, yeah. how true, how true. Yeah, so very true, anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. Oh, always a pleasure. Glad to glad glad that you could join us. Uh John, are you there, brother? I have a special guest, John Pounders of Now You See TV. And I'm excited to do this show. It's gonna be a little bit of a twist from what we normally cover, but so very important and relevant in uh discussion. So I'm glad that you actually did the show that we're gonna, you know, that inspired uh, the follow-up on this. And if you would, John, talk about, you know, that show and the things that we're going to be covering this evening. For sure. Thank you so much, Zen. And, and Kathy, is it? Yes. Kathy, I, this is the first time. I've been on Zen shows before, but I don't think you were on there when I went on last time. So this is this is interesting. Nice to meet you. And uh, You too. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. And, and I and like it. Like Zen said, we did a show, and this is not normal, uh, a normal show for me, but I've been uh, doing a show every Monday night on um, a friend of mine's channel. His name is Montez McCamish, and he uh, does more motivational type uh, videos and also how, you know, keys to success and stuff like that. And so um, we have been talking about this, and this is something that for a long time I had felt like I was going through a downspout in life. And and I wanted to figure out why biblically, because I believe all answers can be found in the Bible to a variety of things, whether it be health, uh, success, uh, happiness, all, all the different things. And um, this was a subject that means the world to me because it changed my life drastically. Um, you know, I've been doing Now You See TV for, since 2010. And during that time, uh, really, you know, limited success until last year. And there's several reasons why, but one of the main reasons is is this, and and I, and I covered a lot of it in the video, and it talks about the curse of failure and bad associations, and um, 
I started looking at different curses. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 um, is one of the first verses or first chapters in the Bible that I came to after becoming a believer. And this was due to, I was driving down the road one day and I was asking God, I said, God, what do you want from me? What, what am I here for? You know, I want to do something to serve you, but I don't know what to do. And I, and I hadn't been reading the Bible very much at the time. Cause I didn't know at the time, I didn't even know for sure if the scripture was a hundred percent legitimate as I'm driving down the road. Um, within minutes of here and, you know, making this prayer, I hear a trucker screaming out the window, read Deuteronomy 28. At first I didn't know what he was saying, actually. The, the, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was interesting. Cause I heard, I heard him screaming. I was like, did I cut this guy off? What's going on? So I told my wife, I said, roll down your window. I want to see what this guy's saying. Maybe we have a flat tire. Maybe I cut him. Maybe I cut him off. I don't know. So when she rolls down the window, he's screaming this read Deuteronomy 28 out the window, just screaming it, hanging out the window. And he just drives off and I'm like, wow, this is, <laughs> you know, this is <laughs> my answer to my prayer almost right away. I don't know what it is. So we had a Bible on the dashboard and I asked my wife to read it to me. And basically it describes, you know, he says, I've set before you uh, blessings and curses. And so I started thinking about that and I, that really had an impact, impact on my life because I started realizing that everything we do either puts forth a blessing or puts forth a curse in our life. And, right. and in the, with friendships, it is a, there's several curses that you can curse yourself under, uh, by having bad friends. I mean, in first Corinthians 15, 33, it can ruin your good morals. Uh, in Proverbs 16, 28, it creates drama in your life, ruins friendships. Uh, Proverbs 22, 24 and 25, it makes you an angry person. And Proverbs 12, 26, it, make, it can make you be led astray. All of those are horrible curses. So if somebody said, I'm putting a curse on you, that's going to ruin all your morals. It's going to create drama. You're going to ruin your friendships and you're going to become an angry man. You're going to be led astray. That would be a catastrophic curse. Right. And But these are curses that we put on ourselves by the friends that we have, by having bad friends, friends that are lazy, uh, friends that are angry, friends that like to gossip, uh, friends that like to be drunkards, friends that like that are sexually immoral. All of these things are mentioned in those verses that I mentioned, uh, the type of people that will cause these curses on your life. And this was when I found this out, uh, I really put together a study on this stuff and I started looking into it and I said, man, I've cursed myself. I'm cursing myself with all this stuff because I am angry. I get angry a lot. Uh, I am sometimes being led astray by stupid stuff. And sometimes I do have drama in my life. And not only that, I'm having financial failures because I'm hanging around with people that are losers are not lifting me up. And I'm, and, and you know, I'm, when I say loser I, and I don't, I don't mean to sound like, oh, you're a loser this, that I'm just saying that uh, if you're not around people that are lifting you up, if you're not around people that are um, doing the kind of things that you're doing, uh, you're not around people that are morally have a moral high ground, uh, you will turn out to be like the person you hang out with. So the people you hang out with, if you can look at yourself and, and see, do you want to be the person that you're hanging out with? Think about that with each person you hang out with. That's basically what the show is about in so many words. But yeah, that I think it's so important that people understand this because uh, these are literal curses. I mean, you know, this is this is a supernatural type thing. It's kind of like if you touch your hand on a on a stove, you're going to burn your hand. It's not necessarily uh, a curse, but in a way, it is. You kind of just curse yourself by doing an action, and so that's that's the gist of that show. Right, and you reap what you sow, and the way that you use your time, your effort, and your focus is what you are going to manifest and bring into uh, being. And uh, the same thing, the other aspect of the listing for this show, because um, this is what I wrote in the description, uh, that John would be joining Kathy and I this evening to discuss choosing your family and friends wisely, as well as utilizing your time and your effort to create a business or dream which will reflect your love of kingdom and relationship with the Most High God. And how many people, you know, are caught up in jobs that they don't love doing, that they spend the majority of their time either serving, you know, their job or some other boss or somebody you know, um, in whatever way. And all of us have dreams and aspirations, which we would love to bring into fruition, bring into manifestation, different things that we would like to do on behalf of the kingdom in serving God, just like what it says in Matthew chapter six, as far as 
put the kingdom first and everything else will take care of itself. Well, I personally have been living that um, for a very long time. And I see that also reflected in you and the work that you're doing and the people that you are uh, coming together and sharing interview with and and the people that you are surrounding yourself with and see. So I see how you are really applying that uh, in your life. And so I thought this would be the perfect thing to speak about uh, this evening because this is one of those things that is really critical for each one of us. And it's something that many people fail at. Um, and they, you know, because of the people they allow into their lives that they surround themselves with. And this is also for family members um, that so many people will allow just because they are family, you know, allow them to be detrimental to even around you know, their children when they wouldn't want them. If they weren't family, they wouldn't allow them to be around children. And so they are exposing themselves to harm and just because they're family members and, and, and they give them a leeway when, you know, really we have to control everything that is around us and make choices as to whether uh, to cut people off and cut them out of our lives if they are full of negativity and if they are really detrimental to us. Um, let me get you to comment on this. And there was one thing that Kathy wanted to bring up before we go into the gist of this show. But if you would, John, comment on that. Um, yeah, you know, it's so important, as in like you were saying, to get the people out of your life that are like that. And, you know, the, the Bible does say to love uh, everyone, to love your enemy, to love your friends. Um loving somebody does not necessarily mean, and it, I, it doesn't mean because, um, you know, the Bible is pretty clear on who you're supposed to associate with, who you're not, it, to let them into your out, your inner circle. And uh, you're, you're right. I have been really applying that in my life with the people that are uh, able to be a part of Now You See TV or able to be on my show. Um, I very strictly, especially people that I allow uh, to be a part of Now You See TV, I have a very strict code of ethics that I go by. And if there's red flags in any way, I automatically see those red flags based on my, you know, past failures with choosing people. Right. Uh, I, I pay attention to them. Most people don't pay attention to that. And I, is that what you're asking? I, I just, I, I listen to what you're saying. I just want to make sure that I'm answering, you know, commenting on that appropriately. Yeah. Well, with regard to Now You See TV, absolutely. But, you know, of course, we're applying this to our regular lives and friends and people who we allow to enter into our inner circle. And so, yes, and they will elaborate on these things um, throughout the this particular show, because I know that, you know, so many people have difficulty with this and and they don't take the responsibility for the choices that they make and for the people that they allow to come into their lives. And so it's very important. Yeah, no doubt. And you're right. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're part of a business. It doesn't matter if you're just a person that works. Um, being around negative people is going to be uh, impossible to avoid sometimes, so If you, especially if you're working at a job where it's constant negative people. Um, but the, the key to that is having people around you, uh, no matter what friends, especially friends, because friends can be such a downfall in your life because you love your friends, you know, you love them. But when they, uh, when they are really destroying your life, you have to take a look at that and love them from a distance. Uh, I probably used to be arguably one of the most popular guys in my city. I would have parties with four or 500 people. I knew everybody. I still know everybody. Um, now, after being a believer, I would say I have roughly three or four friends that I actually go and visit on a regular basis here in this town based on this rule um, that I've made for myself. And so you're exactly right. I mean, there's no um, there's no leeway in this. I mean, you can you can sit and fight it all you want. But if you really want to make a change in your life and you really, really want to succeed and you really just want to have a happy, drama free life, this is a must. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing, as far as, you know, being popular and having four or 500 friends, it takes time and effort to 
maintain relationships with other people. And so if that's all you want to do is have a bunch of friendships, well, then, you know, go that way. But if you want to accomplish something and you want to really establish something like what you're doing with Now You See TV or if it's a business endeavor or a nonprofit where you're helping to feed the homeless, whatever it is, those things take time and effort as well. And you have to ask yourself what's more important, having a bunch of friends or creating an endeavor which you will which will fulfill your inner desires and also reflect, you know, on your relationship with kingdom and with God. And those things in my life are more important. And those are the things that I focus on uh, with my time and effort and with my focus. Uh, And I know that I, you know, I see that in you. I, you know, I didn't know you before, um, but most certainly knowing you now, I, I know that you dedicate a lot of time and effort to Now You See TV, and that's why it is successful. And also in being blessed by the Most High God, because you are assisting the kingdom and doing the work of God and being a servant to humanity, in my opinion. No, I totally agree. And when you're, you're right about having too many friends, I was mowing the grass the other day, and uh, there's a circle. We I live in a circle, and in the middle of the circle, there's this grass, and it was very high. I hadn't been mowed in a long time. All our neighbors are supposed to take turns mowing this grass, but we hadn't, which is kind of besides the point. But I decided I'm gonna I'm selling my house. I'm getting ready to buy a new house. I'm getting ready to sell the one that I'm living in. So I said, well, I'm somebody's gonna have to mow it, so I'm gonna go mow it. Um, as I was mowing this grass, I started for some reason the verse comes to mind: "A man with many friends comes to ruin." And I started thinking about that as I was cutting the grass. And um, because I, for one, one thing that happened as I was mowing, rats were moving all through the grass, uh, which is crazy. I had no idea there were rats out there. There were also snakes in the grass as I was mowing. And I also bit uh, my lawnmower blade on a rock in this grass. And I started thinking about that verse for some reason while I was mowing, which is interesting because I don't normally do that while I'm mowing, but I was thinking about it. And I, and I just thought, how many times have I been in that situation where I had so many friends, I couldn't even keep track of what was going on. Uh, and there were probably rats and snakes and all kinds of people in, in the midst of all that, that I had no idea were there based on the fact that I had too many friends. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a, such a powerful thought in my mind when that happened. And, um, you know, this was, this is after I had been thinking about this, I've been doing my study on this subject and uh, I just thought it was interesting that you said that because that is so true. There's no doubt about it that having too many friends will not only um, allow people in your life that are not supposed to be there, but it will also keep you from succeeding in a lot of different ways that are that you're made to do. Right. Absolutely. You think about all the artists. I mean, they it, rather than spending time with others, they spend their time with their art or, you know, even like businessmen, they spend their time with establishing their businesses and all of that but uh kathy let me give you a chance to comment and then i want to bring up what you were talking about as far as russia and also the uh the update that john just put out on uh, this information okay thanks um i know in in my life that um i don't think i had a lot of friends It, it, it wasn't something of great importance to me i spent a lot of time which turned out to be foundational for me, um, uh, kind of thinking deeply, reading uh, some of the Christian classics, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. This is in my 20s. Um, a lot of Francis Schaeffer, C.S. Lewis, that became, you know, a real love of mine was reading C- Space Trilogy. <laughs> That's where I, you know, found my great love for science fiction. And I think a lot of that led me to where I am today. And like with the uh, tribulation now and, and the science fiction aspect that was certainly interesting to me and, and you know just being kind of a deep thinker so I was more of a loner um, but I find too now at, at this point in one-on-one relationships maybe I'm that same way now however my walk coming back to the Lord about a decade ago going into the mega church, I felt like a loner among all those people Mm -hmm. because I never was able to really connect to them because I had this great yearning for deeper things, which is what I've found now. 
and I connect really deeply. Oh gosh, it upsets me. <laughs> I mean, in a good way. I mm -hmm. connect really deeply with the people that I can minister to, you know, through what we do. Yes. And Facebook and everything else. And, and the people that I have conversations with in this virtual world that the Lord has given us, um, we connect, we really connect. And, you know, I have more friends than I've ever had in my life, but I don't see them, Right, right. you know, but they're there and they care about me and they pray for me and, and I do for them. But, you know, I'll go out to my job or, you know, out any place else. And I, I try and be so kind and loving to everyone, but yet there's no connection there in that way. And when you do try and tell them things, I think, you're right nuts so, right yeah totally you know anyway i'm sorry i got kind of emotional there oh but no no it's, it's just, beautiful i'm really yeah. i'm so touched by the the people that i've come into contact with and and a lot more people are getting to be a lot more friendly since i've been on the show mm -hmm. so it's it's really been wonderful i um on the other um uh thing we wanted to bring up um John, you sent out, you uploaded a, a video and, and sent that out. It was total confirmation for what I did. I send a newsletter out um, once or twice a day, uh, what's going on, and I try and keep a close tab of, of things through my various sources. And I had sent the um, Alexander Dugan video out in my afternoon email um, and a couple of other stories um, uh, one about uh, four signs that uh, were on the brink of nuclear war, what's it? Uh, four flashpoints that could trigger World War III. Um, one, they're looking at EMP and then all of the other um, political or geopolitical areas of um, conflict right now. But I had also gone, there's a, a site, DEF CON Warning, and they had the same information and led me to that FARS report, which you know they weren't exactly sure about. And I had just prior to getting your um, video in my um, email, I had just sent that information out as well wow. about the uh, Russian attack on the intelligence bunker. From That's what uh, DEF CON warning said, but they were referring to the FARS report that they weren't exactly sure, but they had other information just like you. So it was wonderful to see that come in, but this is really important stuff. And I even went to a site that I can access that had Fox News they said nothing, not unless I missed it when I couldn't stand listening to him any longer. But it was all the politics. And, and then there's a lot of, um, and I think this is ginning up. They, well, I live in Tulsa, and there was a, um, a cop killing on last Friday. It was a, a man, father of four. He was coming home from a community college class, and his vehicle stalled. And he was shot fatally. And, you know, there's stuff going on. They said he had PCP. I don't know. I, you know, it just smacks of, you know, something more to me there. But that and then in Charlotte. And so there's, you know, potential unrest. And that was the news. None of this that's going on. And it's a, a powder keg right now. Just anything could ignite it. Yeah, people were more worried about Brad and Angelina Jolie's right. breakup. Breakup. <laughs> Oh, than they are about this. But you're right. The, the Alexander Dugan, most people have no idea who this guy is, but uh, he is basically um, a war strategist in a way because he, but he's more from a religious standpoint, standpoint eschatological uh, standpoint. I've had the pleasure of speaking with him and his people that, uh, you know, that book his shows. And uh, I also have uh, connects over there. They they wanted us to come over to Russia to actually film a documentary about this stuff, but really within the time that I was supposed to have them on our show, America had done that bombing over there and then um, in Syria, and um, this happened like right away. And, and and as soon as I was gonna have him on the show, he said, "Look, I'm I'm preparing for war right now. We're preparing for war. Uh, we'll do this later on." But um, people don't realize how important. Uh, this stuff is, and, and kudos to you for sending his stuff out because America will not have him on the news here. They will not because they're afraid that he, what he says might make more sense than what, and America might actually listen to what he has to say because what he says, he doesn't sugarcoat things. And and you heard the video. He he means what he says when he says this stuff, and he does have the power, and the authority, and also the influence over the Russian people 
uh, with what he says. And he is very firm about what he believes about this. And uh, in the video, I don't know if you listened to the whole thing or not. I'm sure you yeah. did. But he said that basically the only chance we have for peace right now is if uh, oh, if um, uh, Trump is elected president, if Hillary gets elected president, there's no no room for peace in this whole thing. And that's scary. That's a scary thought because, um, you know, our voting system's rigged. Uh, we have so many issues here, and I think the majority would probably vote for Trump to be in. Um, not that I'm saying I I, be, I believe that he is um, not legit, yeah, legitimate candidate or not. But Russia yeah. tends to believe he is, and they really do. They really promote him over there. Um, and I have a feeling he is the most anti-globalist candidate we have. That's why everybody's against him. Uh, that's why George Bush Sr. is voting for Hillary Clinton. There's a lot of push against Donald Trump right now. And this isn't all what it was about Trump, but there, you know, us making things happen over in Russia, we're us promoting terrorist ISIS organizations, uh, doing stuff like that. This America is looked at as a cesspool. We're looked at as a Babylon. And, you know, I have to agree. We are a cesspool and we are Babylon. We are yeah, true. We are ruining um and it's not just maybe us, it's the people that run our country, but there are a, there are a uh, group and a large group of people in, in uh, this country that go right along with it. Yeah, I agree. And that um, not being a vigilant citizenry, not that we really have a choice in election, you know, I, that's all dog and pony show. Um, right. But still, if we demanded and, and if we all got out in the streets and really protested and together the people have power that they don't realize and they don't utilize. And we really could force change and force acknowledgement on issues. But, uh, you know, people are just more caught up in their entertainment and the distractions that are put out there to keep them pacified and docile and, you know, and it, it's a sad thing, um, but that's the way it is. Um, uh, anyways, we're almost to the first break. So when we come back, I want to elaborate just a little bit more on this because um, I haven't seen the video. And so for those that are also listening to the show that haven't seen it, you know, um, and with all the prophecies and also uh, I'm going to be joining uh, David Carrico this Saturday on Now You See TV, and we're going to be talking about all these things. And there are all those prophecies out there that speak about, you know, like the Demetrio Dudelman, uh, the vision of uh, Russia and China attacking the United States and then uh, invading all, you know, and destruction in a single hour, a single day. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody. And I actually had forgotten to give you, John, chance to give out all of the, you know, your contact information and also your website information, your YouTube, where people can go to find and support your work. And also, if you'll talk about some of the upcoming projects that you've got um, pending, uh, especially with uh, the, the, the movie thing that you were... Um, working on as well yeah um you can go to now you org or dot com either one and you can visit our website it has our contact information there you can add uh each of the people that are a part of our now you see tv on facebook or on twitter or also there's an email to be able to contact um also on youtube it's youtube.com slash now you see tv and uh, i appreciate that zen and i and i really um you know our goal as always been, and this is becoming, you know, more of a reality is just to reach as many people as possible with truth, uh, especially when it pertains to mysteries and also biblical truths, because uh, as you know, Zen, there's so many false teachings out there uh, dealing with zeitgeist and similar teachings like that, the truther movement, this non-Christian truther movement, uh, they are putting out a lot of disinformation and not only that, information from the fallen side, me and you both right. are those talk about fallen angels. We talk about that. They put out information. They put out scrolls. They put out um, sciences. They put out all these different things, and people are taking that for truth, whereas we take the most high stance on what the truth is. So our goal is to combat 
that and to give people stuff that they can glean off of because people are hungry for information. People want to know where we came from. People want to know the truth. They want to know the history of the world. They want to know what is real and what is false. And so our goal and your goal and every and all the people that I associate with go are to feed them information to combat the disinformation that's out there. Um, one of the things we're trying to step into uh, re, you know, recently we're going to, um, trying to be offering a, it's, it's going to be able available on Roku, on Amazon, all the streaming services, but it's a channel similar to Netflix, uh, to where not only you can get now you see TV content, but content similar to ours, uh, documentaries, uh, such as Unholy Sea and all the different documentaries that people put out, just all these different things in one spot. So you, it'd be similar to Netflix where you pay a, a, a subscription charge, but you get access to content that you would normally have to buy or, or you know, stuff like that. So there's going to be a lot with it. Now, this is uh, in the future because right now uh, we're in talks with the programming company. This is a roughly $30,000 software, and then it requires keep up. So we'd have to hire an IT guy to keep it up. Uh, but we're in the works with that right now. Um, there's several other things too, but that is the main thing that we're trying to push for. And I think that, it, you know, I, I believe that, and, and I've talked about this in many shows, that what we put our mind into and what we uh, are made to do, we will succeed at. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that um, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I believe that. And as long as you're doing what you're made to do. Now, you know, if I wanted to become a, um, a, a runner for the Olympics, that's not going to happen. I'm just not built like that. My legs would hurt. I can't even run a few miles without my knees trying to give out on me. Uh, so, you know, I'm not made for everything, but I know what I am made to do. And I know that um, Yahweh has given an open door on certain things. And this is something that as long as I'm faithful in doing my part, I know that it will be successful. And that's the thing that we have in Christ, that people don't realize the power that you have in in this. You don't realize the power you have in the Holy Spirit, the power you have in the Messiah and in Yahweh to really make things happen, uh, not so much for you, but for his message. Because when you're spreading his message, uh, the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In that right. case, you went to a company, and think of it like this, if you go to a company and they have very few laborers, but they have plenty of, of jobs, they have plenty of things for you to do, uh, your chances of being moved up and your chances of being successful at that company increase a hundredfold because of that. And it's the same with this. And we're not talking about money success. You know, money comes along with stuff because you have to have money to create content. You have to have money to do certain things. And that's, but that's certainly not what we're doing it for. But success in my mind is enjoying what you do, bringing people to the Messiah and just being happy with what you have going on. Ecclesiastes, so Solomon says it best. Everything is chasing wind. Well, one thing that I found is, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, that when you can be happy with the job that you're at and enjoy your life, there's something to that. And this is this is important for people to remember that though there's not not other much in life that matters because everything else is chasing wind. If you chase after money your whole life, you're gonna look back at your life and realize you've wasted your entire life, especially after you die and all that stuff is burnt up. Uh, it's just so important for us to realize the power we have and not and, and going back to the subject at hand and associating yourself with bad people, putting the curses on your life that will ruin your life. And this is this is real. This is real, real curse. And if people really realize what they were doing to themselves, I think that they would probably um, learn from their actions and move forward. But a lot of people don't take the scripture seriously. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree with you. And, you know, I treat every day because we're not promised any more tomorrows. And I always speak about this on my radio programs, how if people knew that, say, for instance, if they had cancer and they only had a year left to live or if they only had a few months, how people would utilize, use that knowledge to change their lives and to do things differently. But if really, if we apply our mortality and the understanding that we're not promised any more tomorrows and this day that we're living right now could be our last, are you doing with your day and with your life, with your time, your energy, and your focus, 
what you would want to do if it were indeed your last. Are you really fulfilling um, what you feel inside you should be doing with your life, with your time, with your effort? Are you really living for that sacred dream that uh, in fulfilling, because myself personally, my whole focus is on um, performing the role and the mission and the duty I have to God in everything that I do. And that, to me, is the most important thing. And it's not, for me, it's not about money. It's not about uh, gaining a bunch of materialistic things so that I can, you know, have a bigger house, a bigger car, and uh, more stuff to pack into a bigger house, you know, all this, uh, you know, because the whole American dream is built up and shaped up on materialism. And from the time that we're born, they teach us to be good consumers, that you get an education so that you can get a better job, so that you can make more money, so that you can buy more stuff, so that you can buy more stuff for your your wife and your family and your kids, and then you can leave that as a legacy to your children, and then they can, you know, it's just on and on and on. But the real thing is our eternal inheritance and doing work for the kingdom. And this is something that, um, you know, as you said with the the scriptures, that there's uh, so many that are called to do that, but yet few accept that role and really, uh, you know, embrace that and dedicate their lives to that. And um, those that do, in my opinion, are really blessed by the Most High God for doing the work, um, and they don't have to worry. And those other things come along, you know, just like with Matthew 6 again, focus on the kingdom and everything will take care of itself. Um, and uh, I live that. Um, I, I know that from my own personal experience. And it's hard to um, to get people to accept that and to learn it and to dedicate themselves to it because they feel like they have to work for somebody else or they have to stay in a job that they don't even love just because they have bills that they have to pay, uh, which is a whole other side of it that really, in order to gain our freedom, you have to minimize your bills and not spend what you don't have or live above your means. And yet, you know, in our society, it's it's showmanship, and they teach us to live on credit and to spend more than you have and to buy bigger and better things with money you don't have just because they will extend you credit as long as you pay interest, which, you know, steals from your ability to free yourself from that kind of debt. And you were also talking about this in that show too, John, about how uh, if you are a debtor um, and you, just like our country is now, uh, that if you borrow money and you have to pay all this interest on it and you're living beyond your means, then you basically become a slave to those that you are borrowing money from. And so can you uh, comment on that as well? And then we'll go to Kathy. Sure. Uh, the, the scripture says that the debtor will become slave to the lender. And so if you think about that, how many people are in debt right now? And the Bible and the Torah and the Scripture, the guidelines that are in Scripture, the ones that say this is a blessing, this is a curse. If you do this, you'll be blessed. If you do this, you'll be cursed. That is one of the things mentioned. Being in debt is a curse to you, not only for um, just because it's, it's, it's horrible to have to pay bills every month, but the fact that you are not free. You cannot just move and go to anywhere you want. If you if, if Yahweh says, yeah, I want you in South Africa right now, there's a movie that you have to do, or there's something you have to do in South Africa, you can't just up and go. You're a slave to the lender. Okay. Right. It's important to remember that uh, people don't realize that this is, you're right, exactly right when you say that it's been taught and shoved down our throat. I remember in school, a class that teaches you how to build your credit uh, when they should be teaching you how to save your money so that you don't need credit. But that's what they teach you is how to build your credit and how to build 
uh, a debt, a, a sustainable debt, they would say, but a debt in general. And I know that I understand that people have, you know, sometimes they want something that's really important. They want, they, I really need this car. I really need this. And I used to be in debt. I was so, so many thousands of dollars in debt at one time. Um, one thing I would suggest to people like that is David Ramsey. If you look him up, check out his class. That helped me so much when I could just literally say I'm debt free. That was one of the most freeing moments of my life. Not only that, it opened me up to doing what I'm doing right now. Without me being debt free, now you see TV would not be a possibility because I would have to work so much in order to make the kind of money that I needed to live. Whereas now I don't have to do that. I can work as much as I can on now you see TV, not worry about the money as much and uh, do what I'm doing. And you know, now you see TV sustains itself 100% of because of what we do, and it and there's no money that I have to dump into it. Whereas before, I was dumping money into now you see TV with very minimal um, return. Return exactly. So, and that's the kind of stuff that is is so important. And you know, one thing you said earlier too that just really um, triggered something for me to say is that people go their whole lives wondering what they're here for. People yes. go their whole lives just in unhappy with the, the status quo. And I can tell you this right now, I totally understand your feeling, but I can tell you this as well. There is hope. And I'll tell you what that hope is. The hope that you have in this is knowing the creator, knowing the one that made you, knowing what he wants from you. You will no longer have that feeling anymore because you will know yourself. You will know he knows you. He knows exactly what you were made for. He's known you forever. He's known you. He's always known you. And he knows what you're here for, but you don't. He knows. I look at back at my life, all the things that I've been through, everything I went through led me to the moment I'm here. And the same with you. Everything you're going through right now is leading you to the moment. But will you trust him? Will you trust him when you're going through a job that you hate? Will you trust him when you're going through some things that you don't like? Will you trust that this is leading you to another direction? Because I can look back at everything that I've done, even before I was a believer, and say, look, I learned a lot from those situations, and I'm using it right now. And so just have faith and have faith that he will take care of you, and he is guiding you to a path. And when you put your whole faith and your whole trust in him, and you decide, I am going to live like you want me to live, I'm going to do what you want me to do, What and ask him what he wants, and and do it then your life will change. You will no longer wonder what you're here for. You'll no longer have the fear that the world pumps into your head like you might fail, you might you might not make this. Uh, failure is okay. It's okay to fail sometimes. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it, you'll learn the next you'll time. You'll learn, exactly. And you, you'll learn. And, and, you know, failure, a lot of people are so scared about not so much um, their failure, but like people seeing that they're failing. They don't like people to look at them and say, oh, you failed. Who cares what they think? Do they pay your bills? Do they do anything for you other than make you feel a certain kind of way? You have to get past that idea of worrying about what people think in your life. And that is so important. And it's such a revelation that I had in my life. And it changed the way I think. And I think everybody listening right now can definitely learn from that and make their life change based on just not worrying about what people think of you, not worrying about failure and just putting it in and trying, because if you don't try, you will never succeed. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I'm going to make this comment and then we're going to go to Kathy, but for a lot of people, they try to live up to their expectations, other people's expectations, especially that of their parents. And because of that, a lot of times they will dedicate their whole lives to doing things that they don't even necessarily want to do or uh, will stay in a job just because to support a family business or never you know, venture off on their own um, in living up to their own goals and dreams and to chasing down those dreams and to actually accomplishing what they want to do with their lives. And a lot of people... If you allow other people's expectations to dictate your reality, well, then that also is limiting, and it will you can never be free from that until you trust in the still voice within the you know, like Christ said, the kingdom is within. That is our connecting link to Creator and listening to that voice uh, of conscious in the you know in leading us to dream and inspiring us to do things 
other outside of the box outside of other people's expectations a lot of times that is what's going to fulfill us and also fulfill our connecting link with creator because it is um our conscience and the voice within is what um in my opinion helps us to um to fulfill our relationship and to increase it and grow it um and that people need to listen to that more than what they really do and uh and if they did that they would you know be more fulfilled because i know myself i wake up and have my entire day to dedicate to fulfilling what i believe is my sacred role and mission for being here in serving humanity as exampled by my king and my lord and and that is to serve people and to help them to come to remembrance and to understand the gospel in a way that will deeply affect their lives and lead them to deeper relationship with the creator and the creation and i know that you are also doing this john and uh for for blues girl or bella asking about um it, this is John Pounders from Now You See TV, and that's why you recognize his voice. But anyways, let me go to you, Kathy, and get you to comment here. Well, I know um, I started to wake up to truth of what was going on in our world, and that was um, coming out of the 2008 financial crisis because my background, being an accountant and a tax repairer, I had... Um, the idea, I think most Americans at least do, that you have to do certain things, you know, to, like you're talking about, you know, uh, the American dream, you're buying a home. You know, I did that. And I lived in that house for two months before Verizon laid me off. You know? mm -hmm. And and then, you know, the right thing. I went to Las Vegas and I still paid the mortgage, even though my renter wasn't paying me at all. And I paid my rent. You know, the things that you think I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing the right thing. And since I got that push, at the, you know, at looking at that, I didn't see it. I didn't recognize it, but I quit a job to, to come back to um, re, re reconcile with my, my family. Um, so, I mean, those were the wrong things, but I kept thinking, okay, you do this, you do this, you know, you file your taxes. And now I'm learning these things. They, they set out to make us debt slaves. It's fractional reserve banking, yes. you know, learning about the central banking system. And I'd like to maybe after the break, because you guys were talking a little bit about this and, and it took me to the committee of 300 with the Illuminati goals and those things that have been in motion for so very long and people don't realize it. And though we think we're doing the right thing, the fact that you get a 30 year mortgage on your home, you're paying that. And the bank just wrote up this contract. They just made it out of thin air kind of like the quantitative easing and they're monetizing the government debt. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not real. And this is the, uh, the trap that we're living in and we think it's the correct way, but until you have, and see, that's what I was coming through and, and living through. And it's very depressing. And you go through kind of a morning when you realize when it, it, you finally grasp, this is what's really going on. It's, it makes you angry. It makes you upset. You go through this morning, but when you realize and you, and you come back to, and you lean on, on God, because that's the only thing that matters. I mean, for me, perhaps it, it helped bring me that much closer. And then I kept seeking more and more, but this is what the truth is. You know, I, I look around me at uh, my mother has this mortgage on this house and I don't understand why she owes so much money. What could she have done? But that's the way it works. That's how they, they work, work on us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see so much more that's just straight ahead from everything I've learned, but we are, we're, we've been so fooled into believing that this satanic reality is reality and it's not this is you know a time for remembrance this is a time of learning about our creator it, there's so much more that we can be doing and now that i have less than i ever have i work less than i ever have i have more joy and i yes. am in service to the lord i'm actually and i learn and i know and i can't wait to learn more i don't get to to do enough as it is 
you know, but I, and I have great joy and anticipation for what's to come. I'm totally out of that, that debt thing. I mean, in the past, I would have been going to buy a new car or I need another job, you know, right. none of it, none of that is important. What is, is eternal life and my relationship to my savior. That's yes. what's important. That Amen. gives me joy and hope. And that gives me relationship with others that my brothers and sisters that are around me. And I mean, there's no end to what we can do. That's the beauty of the internet for us because we have people like John who make all this great content available. And Zen, you don't stop writing. I mean, we've got so <laughs> much <laughs> there is for us. It's really, you know, such a blessing. So anyway, that's my rant. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Go ahead, John. I was telling Zen that he, his writings have kept me busy for a long time. And he's getting ready to send me two more books. So Three I, more. Yeah, three more books. So, wow. Yeah, I'm going to be reading Zen's books for a uh, you know, pretty time. I have to spend one day a week where I can actually sit and read for a little while. And I've been on Zen, Zen's books for a while now. So. Well, yeah, there's a lot of material and, you know, there's a lot of ancient references and sources that will inspire, you know, other further learning and uh, other seeking. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. Welcome back, everybody, for a second hour. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen, and I have as co-host with me this evening, Kathy Dunson, and our special guest is John Pounders of Now You See TV. Um, I do want to open this segment up with a question from Deanna Hudson, and I know, John, you just did a show on this, so I'm going to get you to comment after I share this commentary. Uh, but she said, uh, hello, Zen. I first wanted to say that I really do enjoy your shows, and I'm learning so much about Scripture. Bless you for all your work for Yahuwah. A quick question regarding a matter that was brought up to me regarding eating bacon or any part of the pig. I read where it is written in the Bible that anything from the swine is unclean, according to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 7 through 8. I mentioned that to one of my friends, and this is how they responded to the matter. Mmm, bacon is good. Peter, kill and eat. What good, what God has cleansed, no longer consider unholy. Acts chapter 10, verse 16, Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. So what my question is, has the New Testament changed this to mean that it is okay to eat bacon or any part of the swine? I am confused and would appreciate clarification. Thank you and God bless. This is my answer in response to her question. And this um, will set you know, the foundation for your response and the show that you guys just did on this. I, I said, the reason that God tells us not to eat swine is because the animal cannot sweat and therefore cannot get rid of its toxins. It is considered disease. It is the same thing for fish that are bottom feeders and birds that feed on carrion. God prohibits us from eating those particular creatures because they will add toxins to our bodies and eventually cause it to break down in sickness or disease. The New Testament does not trump the Old Testament law. In fact, Yeshua came to fulfill the Feast of the Lord as laid out in Leviticus chapter 23. I personally do not eat swine, fish without scales, or bottom feeders for this particular reason. And I personally believe that Christians are wrong when they say the Old Testament law does not apply to us. You can't just throw out half of the Bible because you think we're under New Covenant. Old Testament law is the foundation for the New Covenant. It does not negate it. Even Christ himself says that he came to fulfill the law, not to destroy it. Hope this helps. John? Yeah, uh, very well said. And I, and I would definitely agree with everything you said there. Uh, one thing about the New Testament, a lot of people fail to realize the perspective they're coming from when they talk about uh, unclean foods, or if they if they're even talking about unclean foods to begin with. Uh, when the Bible the Bible describes itself, you can pretty much rely on your interpretation of the Bible through the Bible. Uh, when in especially in Acts, okay, so in Acts ten, we're talking about Peter's vision here. Peter had a vision that uh, this cloth came down. There was all kinds of unclean animals on there. 
and he heard a voice say, go, go kill and eat, or I think that's what he said, go kill and eat, something along those lines. Anyways, Peter's like, surely not. I've, I've never done this my whole life. You know, surely this isn't it. He was perplexed about this. He didn't know what to make of it. And so uh, automatically Christians say, I know what that means, but Peter himself didn't know what it meant. But if you read further down in the chapter and you keep reading, it tells you exactly what the interpretation of that dream was. And it's not anything to do with food. It's about Gentiles. It's about not calling them unclean because he has made them clean through his death and burial and resurrection. So that's one right there. Acts 10 can easily be um, explained, okay? So in Colossians and Corinthians and all the different chapters in the Bible that talk about, you know, all, all foods are good to eat, uh, what are foods, okay? When it says all foods are good to eat, what are foods? Because the New Testament doesn't describe cannibalism as wrong either. If somebody dies naturally and you eat their flesh, is that wrong? Most people would say yes. If a dog, if you kill a dog and eat it, is that wrong? Most people would say yes, depending on what part of the country you're from. Uh, in some countries, eating dirt is is considered food, especially in countries where they don't have a lot of food. They take dirt, they make these dirt pies, they put sugar and flour and stuff with them, and people eat those things, but that is not food. By your description of you can eat anything you want, why not eat rat poison, okay? Is that food? Is a spatula food? Is wood food? No, no, none of that stuff is food. We have to know what is described as food. And then especially there's this one... Uh, verse that people use all the time that I think is completely horrible that they use this verse to try to combat it, but it's in First Timothy, First Timothy, chapter three that talks about in the end times uh, people receive doctrines of demons telling people not to eat meat and stuff like that. So when when people describe God's law as a doctrine of demons, I fear for them majorly because that's what they're saying. They're saying that because people choose to follow the law of the Most High they are subscribing themselves to doctrines of demons. Uh, we have to know what they had in mind when they said all food is able to be eaten. Uh, and there's a verse that says, you know, some uh, talks about your conscience, or some people have a, a strong or weak conscience on these things. But in, this, in the context of the scripture, Paul was talking about in the market, people didn't know whether this food was sacrificed to idols or not. Uh, so some people chose not to eat the meat and some people chose to eat it. Uh, but Paul said, basically, look, we, we don't know if it's sacrificed to idols. Uh, you can, some choose to eat, some choose not to eat. And that's basically what he was just exactly saying. Some with weak consciences choose not to, some with strong ones do eat. And basically he's saying, if you don't know, you don't know. You're not breaking, you know, the commandments because you do not know if it was sacrificed to idols. And that's what he was saying there. People twist the scriptures in a major way, and I'm sorry, I'm receiving a call. You're, you're fine, brother. I, 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 on Messenger, I it, it almost happens every time I do a live show. So, <laughs> anyways, um, you know, this is this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about here. Pork, uh, you, like you said, is a um, an abomination considered in the scriptures. It's an abomination to eat pork, and that's something that I take seriously. Anytime an abomination is mentioned in the scripture, you should very take it ser take it very seriously. And another thing to, to mention this, this is important to know, that if the New Testament contradicts the Old Testament in any way, it's to be thrown out. It is to be thrown out. If Paul changes the way that the whole scripture has been deciding that this is the way it is and, and God's law is this, and Paul deviates from that, Paul is a false prophet. Now, do I, I don't believe Paul is a false prophet, but people would really tend to believe that he is based on their own uh, admissions that they think Paul came in and clarified that we don't have to do this stuff, or Peter came in and clarified that we don't have to do this stuff. They're basically, without knowing it, calling them false prophets, because the Deuteronomy 13 test is very important. Basically, it tells you if anybody tells you not to keep the commandments, they are a false prophet. And it's so important for people to remember that. And the, and we got, we got to look at it this way. It wasn't until about a few hundred years ago that we adopted this whole uh, dispensationalist idea, this whole idea that the church replaces Israel. Uh, we are Israel, and the Bible is clear on that, very clear. Anybody who's in Christ is Israel, according to Paul. Uh, Yeshua himself, Jesus said, I came only for the lost sheep of the lost or the sheep of the lost house of Israel. That's ten. There's ten tribes out there that people have no idea who they are. The ten tribes that have been scattered across the world. The only two tribes that are around to this day that people know who they are are the Jews and um, the Le or Jews and the um, 
the tribe of Benjamin. They were together in the kingdom. There was uh, the northern kingdom, I believe. I, I could be I'm mixed up right now, but I think the northern kingdom went into captivity in Babylon. It was either north or south, uh, if if you remember, correct me if I'm wrong. But either way, it's it, the north. I believe it's the northern. Yeah. yeah, the northern kingdom were the two tribes that went into ki- the captivity in Babylon. The other ten tribes went to captivity in Assyria. They were no longer allowed to keep their customs. They forgot who they were, and they were scattered across the world. The other two tribes know who they are. They are the Jews of this day. And in the scripture, this is this is a whole new teaching here. I mean, I could go on about this forever. Stop me whenever. But when no, we, you're good. When we, talk about, when we talk about who Israel is, okay, in the Scripture, and I'm going to pull up the Scripture here in a second um, just so you guys can hear this because this is really important to understand. And without understanding this, I have a hard time believing it. you could really truly understand the Scripture. Most people think when they think of Israel, they think of Judah, and they think it's the same thing. After Solomon, uh, they were split into two kingdoms. They were even splitting. You could see the split happening during David's reign, uh, Israel and Judah. Uh, but after this, they completely split into two kingdoms. Okay, and so on Jeremiah three, and Jeremiah chapter three, verse eight, it says, "She saw that for all the adulteries of the faithless one Israel, I had sent her away the decree of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she too went and played the whore." Okay, so this is uh, there's there's tons of verses I could bring up that show the division in the two kingdoms. It's, right. it's and right after that, there's no doubt. In the scripture, if you look at the scripture and study this, you'll find numerous, numerous verses that show this clear division between Israel and Judah. Okay, so um, this is important to remember. A decree of divorce, if you look in the scripture, what divorce is, according to the law, and I believe Yahweh follows his own laws. I believe they are universal laws that he put in place that he himself follows in order to be a just and righteous king. Okay, so when you send a decree of divorce against your wife, According to the scriptures, according to Leviticus and Deuteronomy and several other places where it talks about divorce, it says that if you send a decree of divorce against your wife and she goes out and becomes married to another, you are not allowed to take her back as your wife. It's it's not it cannot happen uh, because that would be considered adultery and it's a sin to con- commit adultery. So after Yahweh sent out a decree of divorce against Israel. Uh, there was a mystery in the scripture He, because he did make a prophecy after that that I will bring her back to me. People didn't understand why, how he could do that without breaking his own law. Well, a lot of people don't realize this, and this is not part of the, the gospel that the modern-day church teaches, but this is the gospel. Okay, The gospel is that Yahweh came down as a man through his son, Yeshua. He came down, he died, and he was reborn so that we could be married back to him so that he does not break his own law. This is important to remember. This is a beautiful thing because now that you know your identity in him, this is important. You are Israel, and therefore you share in the promises of Abraham. This is so important to remember. And in Romans chapter 7, let me pull this up. Paul clarifies this, and most pastors you bring this up to will have no idea what you're talking about. They will will act like they're... Um, men, you just they have no clue. They have no clue about it. And I brought it up to several of them. They're they're puzzled. They had no idea it was in there. Um, and it's it's just interesting. In Romans chapter seven, it says, "Or do you not know, brothers? For I'm speaking to those who know the law." So, in all admissions, any new believer should stop right there because you don't know the law. Okay, but it goes on to clarify what the law is talking about. It says that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Now it clarifies what law they're talking about. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit of God. So this is talking, Romans 7, wow. take that and they take it to be, oh, this is talking about the law in general. No, it's talking about a specific, very specific law. Paul caught it. This is the prophecy. This is what happened. Yeshua, Yahweh, came to this earth to die so that we could be married to him again, to bring his bride back. He forgave us, and he took us back. And this is is such a great love story that people miss so much, and I love it. And it it really changed my life when I realized this stuff. And most of you out there, if you don't know, you are Israel. You are Israel. You are his beloved. You are his bride. You are the one he came for. 
And if you, you want to say, well, I don't know if I'm Israel by blood, it doesn't matter. You are Israel because you came to him. He said his sheep know his voice. So that means that because you knew his voice and you came to him, you are his sheep and you are Israel. And that's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing, brother. Um, you just taught me something there. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. And yeah, that unites it in, um, in very profound manner. So for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, Kathy, did you want to comment here? I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> uh, okay, right on. Um, I wanted to also get you to comment because you had talked about the parable of the talent. And I talked about that also, and I applied it to um, to uh, the way that I talked about it was in connection to the all the different biblical scriptures. And you can also apply that teaching to the the skill set that Yeshua uh, and Yahweh Elohim had given to us, and also to the the talents that he's given to us, uh, to the blessings that he's provided to us. And so uh, I wanted to get you to comment on that because I thought the way that you related it in the show, in that show that, uh, and we'll post a link to that show. Uh, it is uh, linked on the Facebook description for the show, but we'll post it in the chat room. Kathy, if you don't mind, if you'll do that. Uh, but I wanted to get you to share and elaborate on that as well. Sure, and I can't remember exactly how I put it in that show because I put it in several ways and use it for many different mm -hmm. things. But I'll I'll basically, you know, when I look when you look at the talents and and you you look at the different servants that he gave the talents to, uh, one of them buried the talents. Okay, he didn't he didn't want um, he didn't want to lose them. He didn't want to um, have the king come back and say, you know, I lost your talents. It's, they're gone. Um, and then another guy he he went and he multiplied the talents. Okay, so. The things that we've been given, we have a direct responsibility to take those and multiply them. We have a direct responsibility to do that um, because we've been given so much. The more you're given, the more is required of you, okay? So people don't realize that there's so many people out there that have so much in this life. They have such a personality. They have such a... Um, just mainly the personality in general, the ability to persuade people, the ability to talk to people, and they waste it. I've seen so many people that were just so talented, and they're in jail right now. People right. that I know, they're, they're in prison. They've wasted their talents. They've completely not even buried them. They wasted them. They just took them and spent them, and they're gone. And they're in prison for the rest of their life. Some of the people that I grew up with, some of the people that I know, and they just they wasted that. They could have been so powerful. And those of us that have been given these talents and everybody's given something. Everybody has a purpose living in this world. No matter, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you think about yourself. You probably think if you don't think you have one, you are thinking way too lowly of yourself. If you are a child of the most high, you are Israel, you are his bride. He's given you something. He's given you something. You are, you are important. You are a blessing to this world. And I know that people don't think that way and people, and it's sad because the world has taught you that you have to be a certain size or you have to be, um, a, you know, have to look a certain way, right. be a certain color. You have to be a, a certain, you know, education weight. level, weight. Yeah. You have to, all these different things, but guess what? That's not the way God sees you. God doesn't look at the appearance of man like man looks at the appearance of man. He looks at you from a whole different level. And it's so important for us to realize that and to take the talents that he's given us and multiply them and make more. Because you know what? Every person that you win to the Messiah, every person that you teach something, every person that you make feel good about themselves, every person that you help, that person could turn around and help thousands upon millions. You never know what's going to happen with that talent that you spend on somebody, that talent that you use to make something happen. You have no idea how many people you might be touching in your life just because, just because you've decided to go out and make something happen with what you've been given. And I don't know if that's the way I explained it in the video, but uh, this is, you know, that's exactly the way I feel about it. And I've talked about it in several different lights and several different ways to make the associations. So I can't remember exactly how I said it, but uh, I think that's probably the gist of it. Oh, yeah, that was what, well said. Go ahead, what Kathy. Was the, what was the name of the video? Uh, it's on the, it's connected on my, um, oh, on my Facebook page? on the post. Okay. It's I'll in one it. of the comment sections down there. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, no problem. All right. Now, I, I wanted to also reiterate something that John just said here, because it's important for each of us, in my opinion, to realize how special we are. And this is one of the things that I emphasize in writing this book and coming to understanding as far as the, the flat earth and the enclosed world system, and because it confirms intelligent design and that we were made in the image of our creator, our maker, and that makes us special. And each one of us has the ability if we empower ourselves, if we utilize our energy and our creative abilities, our co-creative uh, capacity to just really uh, manifest incredible dreams, a miracle, really miracles, uh, that everything that we do, uh, the creation, waking up to new day, is new opportunity to perform just incredible miracle and to fulfill um, things that most people cut them short, come, cut themselves short of being able to do because they don't believe in themselves or they are living up to the expectations of others and allowing those expectations to dictate what they do with their lives or they um, choose not to follow out a dream or to uh, use their time, effort, and their energy to create a business or to become better at a particular skill, um, it, whether that's art or writing books or doing radio shows or whatever it is. Or And John, you even talked about uh, if you have a love of just uh, grooming pets, you know, that you follow up on your love and that you fulfill your dreams um, and your passions and your desires by living up to those dreams and then you can you can convert it into a business and doing something you, that you love you don't wake up every day and go to work dreading um you know what you have to do with your time and your effort and that instead of because this is the other thing too in my opinion it takes more energy to hold on to things in the way that they are than it does in letting them go and chasing new opportunity. That it takes a lot more energy to hold on to our destructive habits and in recreating the, the same routine every day over and over and being bored or unfulfilled by them than it does in making a change and deciding to use your energy differently and to follow out your dreams, to see where it will lead you, um, especially those of you that are wanting to live for the kingdom but that don't believe that you, know, you can make the change to actually do that and fulfill that, that you stay stuck in a dead-end job or committed to working for somebody else uh, because you're afraid to, you know, to open the window of opportunity to change. And again, in my opinion, it takes more energy, if not at least the same amount, to just repeat the routine than it does in changing it. Uh, John, do you want to comment before we go to break? Yes, for sure. And, you know, you're so right about all this stuff. It m takes it takes you going after your desire because God put a desire in each and every one of us. And, it, you know, obviously if it's not an evil desire, uh, but when you have, I talked about in the show about dog grooming. Okay. Um, there are people that really may enjoy that may enjoy it there. And that's just an example. Obviously it doesn't have to be dog grooming, but anything that you enjoy doing, if you put yourself into that and you really make something happen with that, guess what? It becomes a job. It becomes something that you love doing that you can do. People buy into this idea that you have to go to work uh, at this job. A lot of people have gone through college and they think, well, I want to get a job doing what I went through college for, but I have these student loans that I have to pay off. Right. Well, guess what? Be patient. You are young uh, if you're graduated college. Most of the time, some of us aren't. Be patient. Do the job that you enjoy. Your college debt's going to be there for a long time, whether you get a really good job or not. And it's unfortunate because um, 
I, 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 me personally, I don't have any college debt, but I know people that do. And not only are they not doing what they went to college for, they probably never will at this point. They've gone so long at the job that they're at. They're secure in the job they're at. Uh, but yet at the same time, in the back of their head, they're wishing, they're saying, why didn't I not do what I was made to do? Why didn't I not do this? And this is not something you want to get to the end of your life and say, I really regret this. Regret is a scary right. thing. Regret is a sad thing. And you have to know yourself. I mean, knowing that you are made for something, knowing and be, anything can be a ministry. People don't realize that. When I used to drive a cab, I made it a go. I'm going to be the best cab driver this company has. I'm going to be the best at this. And guess what? It opened up for ministry because at the end of the night, I was picking up people that lost all their money at the casino, people that got drunk and were depressed. And I was praying for these people. And it became, I called it the cab ministry. Okay. So wherever you're at in life, you can be happy. And you can really make a difference. And if you're at a job right now that you can't really leave right now, let's say you're a single mom, be the best at that job. Move up in the job. I started a job at a car wash one time, and I decided I'm going to – and I started out as a car dryer, which is the lowest end of the job there. I said I'm going to be the best car dryer that this place has. I'm going to dry cars the best. I'm going to drive them the fastest. And I'm going to do it. I started making a lots of tips drying cars, okay? Then after that, the, the owner started seeing that, like, this guy is doing an awesome job. No complaints with drying. Uh, I'm going to move him to the front because that way he can wash the cars better. Uh, so uh, it looks like we're going to break. I'll yeah. Yeah, we'll pick it up on the other side. Be right back, everyone, for final segment. All right, welcome back, everybody, for final segments. Uh, I do want to just uh, quickly appeal to the listening audience. Those of you that can, please do go to freedomslips.com, click on the donate button, and for the price of uh, a Happy Meal, uh, four ninety four ninety five a month, you can gain access to the archives and then download all your favorite host uh, shows in MP3 format. And there's over 40 hosts on both Studios A and Studio B. And all of the shows going back to January of last year are available on the archives, I do believe. So, uh, and thank you in advance for doing so. Uh, John, once again, I want to get, get you to give out your information, contact information where people can find your shows and to support the work and efforts that you put forth sure uh you can go to now you see tv.org and that's just spelled exactly the way the words are spelled um it's not you as in you know just a regular you it's y-o-u now you see tv.org or dot com uh you can go to our youtube channel you can type in nys tv and in, in this youtube search and find us or you can type out now you see tv and you'll find us uh but you can find all our content pretty much there also you can add us on facebook we share stuff on there that we don't necessarily share on YouTube sometimes and Twitter as well. But yeah, you know, just we'd appreciate you if you guys come over and follow us and it'd be great to meet you. And um, we're just we're thankful for that. Yeah. And it's a, a beautiful thing, you know, all the people that are coming up, um, because I know that for yourself, you had to at some point just decided that you were going to put your energy and your effort into now you see tv as an endeavor and it has blossomed and been beautifully blessed because you are serving the kingdom and so that reflects in how i mean you are basically being an example to others as to how they can replicate it in their own lives and i know myself in growing up uh, when i was younger like i published my first book when i was 22 years old and a lot of the times when I was working on my writings working on because I wrote poetry books first before I actually started writing uh, books about the the Bible the biblical narrative the scriptures and but a lot of people they told me that I was basically wasting my time that there would be you know it would never lead to anything and that there was no reason to do that uh, to put my, you know, that same cliche saying, uh, keep your day job, that kind of thing. Uh, but I didn't listen to any of them. And I just kept doing what I did. Um, my whole life, my younger life, I was involved in martial arts. 
uh, in snowboarding and writing poetry. And that's what I did with all of my time and energy. And I got, I got tired of the whole nine to five dream um, and always being behind the walls. Like I found myself at one point in my life when I was um, after high school, when I was going to college, I was working a job uh, for my father and then I was going to college and then I was going to martial arts at night and then I'd go to work out and then I'd go home and sleep and basically wake up and do the whole routine again. But what I found is that I was always either in a building or in a car or behind, you know, or driving to another building where I would have to either work or have to go to school. But I, I felt like I was always separated from the creation and always contained like in a box and never connected to the creation. And so I decided that I was going to just quit everything and buy a van, sell everything and then just travel for years, for as long as I could do it. And uh, I ended up living in a van for four years, just traveling across the United States of America, living in the different national parks and uh, state parks, and uh, and just writing poems and you know practicing martial arts and snowboarding and skateboarding. And that was the most free I had ever been. Uh, waking up every day, not having anywhere I needed to be, not having anybody calling me, uh, not, you know, having a job that I had to go to and just waking up and every day the dream was fresh. It was new. I, I could leave and go somewhere else. I could travel wherever I wanted to. And I lived my life that way for four years and it was the best most incredible experiences of my life. And it was during that time that I was really seeking experience of the divine. And I was actually involved in shamanism at the time and doing a lot of sweat lodges and vision questing and things like that. But I was seeking direct experience of God. And it, it in that whole process, I really developed a very deep, intimate, and close relationship with the Creator. And that those years were my formative years, and they shaped my life, and they led me to be what I am now. And then even after I acquired my disability and uh, becoming paralyzed, having that relationship with the Most High God is what helped me to pick up all the pieces and to then, you know, having the time to study the scriptures, um, I always did what I felt was necessary to uh, expand upon my relationship with God. And I always lived my life with that as my focus. And eventually, I was able to turn all those skills and all of that research and learning that I had acquired in committing my life in that way into what now has become a ministry and being able to touch people and to share just incredible relationships like with what Kathy and I share and what we share with our listeners and the fellowship that we do with you and the other Now You See TV guys and Rob Skiba and all those that reach out to us that listen to our um, videos on my Endeavor Freedom and Zen Garcia YouTube channels and that come to Fallen Angels TV and that, you know, share time and space and dialogue and conversation and fellowship with us. Those are just very deeply rewarding um, friendships. And, um, and I know that it's the same for you, but I wanted to give you a chance to talk about, you know, coming up yourself and when it is that you decided to dedicate yourself to kingdom and how it has worked out for you. And then we'll go to uh, Kathy for comment. Yeah. And, and that was a beautiful story. And I, and I really appreciate you continuing and doing the work that you do Zen. I just want to tell you, and you as well, Kathy, um, 
you know, when the reason that I decided to just 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 to put everything in on Now You See TV, this was a tough decision for me because there's been many times in my life that I decided that I wanted to do it, but I never did. I always made excuses. Okay, uh, before Now You See TV and before I went all in with this uh, less than a year ago, I was working for and I helped start a Christian hip hop label and we were doing pretty well doing doing well but I was spending so much time and energy on that that I didn't have uh the time and energy to spend on now you see TV I found myself complaining to my wife a lot saying you know I really want to have more time for now you see TV but I got this stuff with this and and I would do it all the time and I think she got really sick of it one day <laughs> and she didn't realize this but God spoke through her that day he she said she said, "Why don't you just do it? Why don't you just quit now? You quit with your record label and do this. This is what you want to do. It's clear that this is what you want to do. Do it and quit complaining to me about it." And when she, <laughs> when, she, when she said it, it hurt. I was like, "Oh man!" But she was right. She was so right. And so that's exactly what I did. Uh, we went from having about eight thousand subscribers. Now we're over thirty thousand subscribers. Um, we went from having uh, basically about 2,000 uh, daily website visitors to over 40,000 we daily website visitors, uh, all in that short period of time because I decided I'm going to go all in. It had nothing to do with how uh, much better I was um, than anybody else because I'm not. I'm probably one of the least uh, uh, professional when it comes to a radio a voice or a video, but at the same time, we have some of the best guests, and I, and I work really hard. I would say that um, nine times out of 10, I outwork almost everybody that I can think of. And, and, you know, I don't know, obviously, at least I feel that way I do, you right. know, I don't really know what everybody does, but I do know this. And, and this is something that I just, I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy just taking myself and looking at this or, you know, when I used to work out all the time, I would say, nobody's going to work out on Thanksgiving. I'm going to go work out on Thanksgiving. I'm going to pass these guys up because I used to do uh, martial arts as well, a little bit of mixed martial arts. I did uh, boxing and a little bit of jujitsu. And I would go to the gym thinking on, you know, nobody's going to go here on Thanksgiving. They're going to be eating and gorging themselves. I'm going to go here and work out so I can beat this guy when I go back in. Uh, on Christmas, the same thing. Nobody's going to be in the gym. And nobody was in the gym on those days. But it's the same with now you see TV. I look at it like that. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not in a like public competition with anybody out there. I always, but I do, what I do is I'll find somebody that I'm close to and subscribers. I'm saying, how can I get past this person? And it's not so much that I'm in competition because I feel like we're all uh, working together on this, but it's something that drives me. It's something that keeps yes. me wanting to push forward and push forward. And uh, I love it. I love doing stuff like that. I love really putting everything I have into it. And sometimes I work too much. I give myself that. I do work too much. I, but the thankful thing is the Sabbath, which Yahweh has given us, is that yes. a day to sit there and just relax and rest. And I still do shows on the Sabbath because I'm doing kingdom work, but I don't right. work on my website as much. I don't do any any of that stuff. I, I relax and spend time with the family, and I'm thankful for that day. And, you know, I, I enjoy working, though. People are like, oh, you have to work all the time. I have friends that are, why don't you ever go out and play golf with us? Why don't you do this? And then and then they have the audacity to tell me I'm lucky that I get to do what I'm doing. I'm And I think, are you kidding me? I'm lucky. You guys are going out and playing golf all these nights that I'm working. You guys are going out and going out to eat all these nights that I'm working, and I'm lucky. Maybe you try to take the time that I put into what I'm doing and put it into what you're doing, and we'll see how luck turns out. Because I did a show not too long ago about luck, because luck is highly misunderstood. I believe in a certain amount of luck, but it's not luck like what people think, lucky about winning the lottery. I believe that the more you put yourself out there, the harder you work, the more opportunities open for you. That's what mm -hmm. I the opportunities that you allow yourself to have by working really hard. And, uh, and, and you know, I was saying earlier before the break, when I worked at a car wash, I worked my hardest to, to end up managing that place because I wanted to enjoy what I did. I made a f game out of it. I made it made it fun to me to be able to drive more cars off than somebody else, to be able to wash the cars better, uh, to be able to get there earlier, whatever it was. I just always enjoyed doing that. And, and I can say this, that um, in my life, I made a lot of mistakes because I was tr always trying to do too much. I was trying to do the label. I was trying to do Now You See TV at the same time. I was trying to work at another job at the same time. I had like three jobs I was basically doing, and some of them weren't even making money. So it was just I was just constantly spinning my wheels. And when I decided I'm going to take this one thing that I love and I'm going to do everything I can to make this my opportunity, when I did that, 
things changed for me drastically, uh, not only uh, monetary wise, but just the amount of, and, and which is not even the most important part. The most important part is reaching people went from reaching 20,000 people a month to almost a million people per month through videos and through stuff like that. That, that to me was, I, this was, this is success reaching that many people. And I want to reach more. I'm never going to be satisfied with how many I reach unless I'm until I'm reaching, you know, 10 million people a day. I don't think I'll ever, I don't even think I'll be satisfied. Then I'll be like, well, there's billions of people in the world. And, you know, yes. that's just the way, that's just the way I am. But I think that it's, it's so important for people to find that thing and go after it full force, never stop and just go at it. And don't And you said earlier something about not caring what people say. You can't care what people say. You can't take everybody's advice. If you took everybody's advice, you'd be worthless. I don't know how many people comment on my videos telling me advice, and they don't do anything. They you look, right, right. And they're giving me advice on what I should do. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna take your advice. Uh, you know, and you can't do that. You can't take people's advice. You have to be thick skinned You have to move forward and do what you're made to do, and know what you're made to do. And it's, there's nothing wrong with taking advice from people that know what they're talking about. Right. Part of having good friends and part of having people around you that you. Uh, you know, like when when we were talking not too long ago about the the uh, book publishing thing, which right. is, I still want to do, uh, you know, at some point in in what we're doing after I get all this other stuff going. But it's it's something that I came to you about because you know what you're talking about. Did I ask some bum on the street how do I publish books? No, I went to somebody that's already put out ten or twelve books and and asked them because that's the kind of people you need to be getting advice from, not uh, exactly. some podunk troll on youtube you know right <laughs> yeah absolutely and um we're similar in this regard in that i like to be productive with my time i don't get like you know how so many people are bored i never ever get bored because i always have just so much that i need to accomplish that i want to accomplish in service to the kingdom and like i don't like to waste time I, I understand as far as having balance, like, you know, there was a time where I worked too much and I have since learned that in order for my own sanity and, you know, to not let the heaviness of the work that we do in studying about New World Order and, you know, the prophecy, the cataclysms that are on the horizon, the financial collapse, I mean, all that can just weigh on you. And so I, I do realize that we have to balance that by remembering how to laugh and enjoying time and space with our family and going out and, you know, I like to hang out with my cats outside and watch the roses grow and watch the sun cross the sky, you know, or the sunset or sunrise and uh, just being with the creation and, you know, being in communion with God in that way. And I, I think more people should take the time to do that because, you know, having that connection with the creation, with the creator, uh, there's nothing more fulfilling to me than just being part of the everything in moment. And it's an incredibly awesome realization and opportunity and chance to experience. And so I, I wish more and more people would, you know, recognize that and take the time to do that. But uh, Kathy, I want to give you a chance to comment here. Um, well, I think that people can see in our lives uh, different ways that we've been able to reach out and get involved in ministry just through our own action. I have heard people say, you know, well, when I decide to retire, I'm going to go to school and study how I can, you know, get involved in a ministry. And I think, well, you can get involved in a ministry right now. Right. You know, <laughs> there are so many things that you can do. Um, I mean, for myself personally, I found at one point I had some extra time on my hand and I reached out to someone who had a blog that was writing about, uh, you know, this was tribulation now, that was writing about interesting and different and unique things. And I just said, can I help you do some research? And so that was one way I got involved and it has led me to know you and to, to be doing this here. And I started a Facebook page and we have over... 55,000 followers now, you can impact and reach people just by getting out and doing. I used to uh, create worship playlists and send those out, and those would impact people. There are so many people that we have opportunity to reach right now who are, you know, they're alone, but they have a connection through the internet. All ages, all over the world, 
who we can share the love of Christ with yes. and or we can help support and 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 lift up. I mean, I had two sisters that I I know of this week who lost children who are, you know, older. One was 39 and one was 42. I mean, how heartbreaking, but we were able to reach out and come uh -huh. together and pray for one another. There are so many different ways to minister within the body of Christ through online ministries just I mean, it sounds like an institution when you say the word, but you can reach out and get involved. It's it's just uh, caring for one another. Care for people when you're out on a regular daily basis. Care for your family. Care for your pets. <laughs> um, yes. But just there are so many ways. And, and I, you know, I am so busy now, and it's mostly because Zen keeps thinking of ways to do things. <laughs> but it's fascinating. It's wonderful. And it's it's so vital um, to continue to do that, be busy at this time. And, and as I, cause I'm the one that puts, pulls together all of these doom and gloom articles, you know, we're looking at the financial collapse and world right. war three coming in. I mean, that was the title of my afternoon newsletter. And I thought, am I going out on a limb here? And I just called it world war three and sure enough, boom, boom, <laughs> there's more coming in supporting the idea. And I'm thinking, yes, I know the financial collapse is coming and this is but, you know, it doesn't get me down. This is all coming. This is prophesied. Yes. This is what, you know, we're looking to happen. This is the next step in things. So, you know, I look at it with such a, a level of excitement. And I just, I want to be involved. And I want to help people. And I want to love people. And I want to continue to learn downloading John's shows. Because that's what I do. Every I've either got headphones on or earbuds in, you know, I'm listening to stuff, doing whatever I'm doing, working, or, you know, uh, reading and, and doing this work. I, we can all be involved, and I encourage people to do that so you can feel that fulfillment as we get, you know, as we're waiting and at this moment in time, we're waiting and watching for our Savior. Yes, amen. Beautifully said. Uh, one last thing as far as just remember, uh, people, that, we are not promised any tomorrows and that this day could be your last and live accordingly. Uh, John, I want to give you a chance for final comment. We've got like three minutes remaining. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely, what you said there, Kathy is spot on and you're, there's no time to be bored. I don't, I don't even, I can't even understand people that tell me they're bored. I just don't, right. I've never, I don't think I've been bored. I don't know when the last time I've been bored is. And I don't, I just don't see that as something that we should, you know, idle hands or the devil's workshop, they say. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important too. you, like you said, get involved in something, be a servant because servant in order to be a leader, people don't understand this, but you have to be a servant. You have to yes. know how to be a servant. You have to go out there and get your hands dirty. Uh, leaders become or followers become leaders because people follow their example of how they, how they are servants. And it's so important for us to remember that I, you know, I started out in so many ministries, just being a servant guy that picked up chairs afterwards, doing this and doing that, um, really just doing what needed to be done, filling the gaps in ministries or filling the gaps when somebody is hungry on the street, filling the gaps with them, fill, doing whatever you have to do to serve other people, because that's the only way you become a leader. People, There's a lot of bosses out there that just boss you around and they're jerks or whatever, but there's a few leaders that really know how to lead people, lead people into happiness, lead people into success, lead people into a life that they want to live. And, and just by doing it, you will become a leader. People will follow that. Um, and, and I know we, uh, just cut me off whenever, but I, I, I know no, that. Please continue. I know this, that when I, um, when I used to try to look for people to help with now you see TV, which I gave up on. All right. Which was in, very important that I did that. And I didn't realize how they important it is, but instead of looking for people to help, I just started doing everything that needed to be done mm -hmm. with that. People came along and said, Hey, I want to help with your ministry. I want to help with what you're doing. And because I was doing it, they wanted to help. Not when I was trying to find people to do stuff that I couldn't do or didn't want to do. Um, it didn't work. It wasn't something that worked at all. But when people saw, Hey, this guy's doing this stuff, I want to join in and help him. That's when all of a sudden people just started like, you know, we have an intern that was a college intern. We have him, 
Uh, we have uh, my friend John Hall that is doing, he's doing a show right now. And now you see TV as we speak doing it so I could be on this show. Um, he does, he's done so many things to help with the ministry. I've got my friend Daniel Hat that does a lot of our video shoots. I got a friend that works for Skywatch that helps with the editing on some of the documentaries that we have coming up. All these people just wanted to help and stepped out and help because I was doing it. And that's the same thing for you guys. You can go out there yes. and do stuff and people will follow you. Yes, well said. And uh, yeah, they people want to help. They want to get involved in things that are meaningful, that are touching other people's lives, that are affecting others, that are, you know, helping give guidance and direction to other people. Because, you know, even like a Generation X, all the kids, they are really looking for real answers. They want true guidance, true uh, people that understand and can point the way, hint to them as to which way they need to go, which way they need to, what things they need to study, how they can develop relationship with God themselves. And so that's what people want more than anything. All right. God bless all. Good night. May you be blessed. Thank you, John, for coming on with us, brother. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Thank you. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank you, Sister Kathy. God bless all. Good night.